Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cover. I am Penj and welcome back to Mars Horizon, where the European Space Agency still find themselves lagging behind their rivals. Despite our best efforts, we are still struggling to keep up with all of our rival agencies. I mean, we're not doing too badly. I mean, in terms of resources up here, we've got a nice amount of money. Science is coming in very nicely as well. And we've got quite a lot of support going on. We're in the seventh tier of support. So it's all looking very good, but we just can't keep up with our rivals. We did have lofty ambitions last time to try and land people on the moon first and it was looking okay it was looking okay we got some of the research done down here we made sure that we got you know, proper beeline for getting this research done here to actually you know, get the principles of landing on the moon all sorted and then we got the payload done as well but then we had a bit of an issue that we did not have the sort of you know the boosters and the rocket sort of upper stage and all that kind of stuff sorted so we had to research those and they took quite a long time and in all the time that we were doing this the soviet union went and got there first boo soviet union i mean it's very impressive well done yes with gritted teeth well done but yeah it's not us we did not get there first i mean to be fair we're still we're looking good for second we're looking good for second place, which is wonderful. So yeah, we'll get ourselves a nice big load of support and get ourselves a huge boost of science as well. But it's not first. It's not first. We wanted that lovely sort of shiny first place. So we wanted the gold medal, but alas, it's not going to be first. So yeah, we're currently trying to get that done. So yeah, hopefully we can get a second for that. That'll be nice. I mean, look at that. NASA and China have not even got the research done for this. And we've got the research done. We're just kind of getting everything else sorted. So yeah, currently... The current sort of uh, blocker to that is the fact that we don't have the launch pad. We do not have a large launch pad either sort of built or even unlocked. So we need to get this vehicle assembly building done and then we need to get the large, large launch pad research and then built. We've then got to construct that as well. I mean, it's not cheap. It's going to be very big. I imagine we're going to have to move some sort of trees and rocks out the way and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's going to be a bit of a pain getting this in. So hopefully we can still be second with that one. And then also... Also as well, we're going to go and do the Mars Orbit mission because lots of other people have done it. We're going to be last, but it does give us some nice public support and another great big blob of science, which is very, very handy indeed. And we do need to keep an eye out for joint missions as well. And yeah, we are now, we're now allied. Look, with NASA, we've got the little sort of green bit in there poking into the sort of allied agency status, which means that because we're allied with NASA, we get a large boost to our science. So we get plus 8% to our science income every month because we're buddies with NASA. It would be great if we could become friends with everybody and that would give us massive science boosts. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I do not know. We need a lot of sort of joint missions and they seem to be a little bit few and far between. There are not many joint missions around. So, but there we go. There we go. We'll keep an eye out. But right now, our two mission slots are full currently. So we can't really do too much about it right now. So let's just move on to, I mean, yeah, Mariner 8 is going to be complete. That's the payload for the Mars thing, isn't it? So we'll get that done. Let's get that sorted and we'll see what's going on with that. So just tick time on and ah, right. Vehicle assembly building research is complete. Splendid, splendid. Right, straight down here, large launch pad. That is 5,000 research. And we're currently earning 248 research a month. That's going to take a heck of a long time to get researched. That is going to take so very long indeed. Okay, we might need this other mission to come through. Okay, Mars orbit, done, splendid. Vehicle build cost is a bit more expensive, but we get more science from it. That is perfect. Okay, yeah, let's go and design our, uh, design our rocket. Um, okay, can we reuse a design? It's going to have to be a Bernard. It's going to have to be a Bernard, unless we want to make a new one. Is it worth making a new one? I mean, it's going to be more or less the same as a Bernard, isn't it? That's the only one we've got researched and boosters. We've got a variety of boosters, which we could, I suppose, I suppose we could do something with this and make a different rocket, but we could just reuse the Bernard. The Bernard's okay. And it takes eight months to build. That's the only thing, but it's fine. Yeah, let's load the Bernard. There we go. We'll have a Bernard, 1.8 million. I mean, we've got almost 3 million. So yeah, okay, absolutely. It's very important. We need to go to Mars and get it done sooner rather than later. So, well, uh, so yeah, now, now we're just kind of in a weird position where we've got ourselves the Bernard, which is going to Mars, is going to be complete in eight months. And of course, the HMRS, the Queen Liz, because yeah, Her Majesty's rocket ship, the Queen Liz, we couldn't put Elizabeth in because there's a character limit on the rocket names. Um, that is going to be complete in eight months as well. But that can't launch. That can't launch. But of course, yeah, there's just a bit of, there's eight months where we can't do anything else. We can only do two missions at, the, at once. They're both here. 
So we're just going to have to sort of sit and patiently wait for stuff to happen. In terms of funding review, what's going to happen with this? Japan have completed Animal in Space. Now, I know we're lagging behind in many things, but Japan, that's... I mean, when did... America did that in 1960. It's 1973. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Crikey's. Okay, well, there we go. That took a long time for them to get that done. Right, funding review. Funding review. Did we actually go up? I don't think we did, did we? Oh, right, okay. We've increased it a tiny bit, but not enough to actually get any more money. But that's all fine. That's all good. Okay, so spin it round. Uh, NASA shares payload upgrade. Due to your close relationship, NASA has shared an improvement in guidance software that will be of direct benefit to your current crewed moon landing. Payload reliability of Apollo in your crewed moon landing mission has been increased by 10%. Oh, thank you, NASA. Oh, that's wonderful. Let's go space hugs. Space hugs all round. Oh, that is brilliant news. Okay, so next month, those two rockets are going to be complete. So we've got the one for the uh, moon landing. There is the HMRS, the Queen Liz, which is brilliant. 5% launch reliability. That is very welcome. And the Bernard. Oh, okay. So launch reliability, yes. Rocket less likely to go boom, but payload reliability down, so payload might just get stranded in space. Okay, okay, right, launch prep. Now, we will not be able to do the moon landing because we do not have a rocket, a uh, launch pad, sorry, ready that can you know, cope with that rocket, but Mars orbit we can do. We can sort this. So, what do we want to get? Bit of extra support from our PR office that we constructed last time, a bit more science, or launch reliability. Base launch reliability, 99%. I think we'll be fine. How about we go, we get 153k a month. So the base support, that would be quite helpful, but I think the science would be more useful. Let's get 3,698 science out of this. That could be very good indeed. And then when do we want to go? Um, if we do this a bit later, the launch reliability does come down. The only thing is, what? How come everything is terrible for... What is going on? We saw this last time. Just so many dates that are just terrible for launching to Mars. It must be... Yeah, I don't know. It must not be nearby or whatever. Yeah, there's obviously weird orbits going on. That whole start of 1975 and the end of 1974 just must be terrible for launching. Do you know what? I think we might just have to go, boom, get that done there. Extra 5% science. But it's better than waiting all that time. In all that time, we could do some other missions. We could do other stuff. So yeah, let's just let's just do this next month. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, confirm that, please. That is brilliant. Okay. Right. Here we go. So this will be this Mars orbit. Launch this. I think the yeah the launch chance is going to be okay. So what does it look like? Yeah, a ninety nine percent launch reliability. There is a one percent chance that it might all go boom, 10% uh, extra sort of increase from our excellent conditions. Okay, okay, come on, let's do this. Don't blow this up, because this is an expensive rocket. This Bernard cost us a lot to put together. It was a very expensive thing, but here we go. So please do not explode. There is our Bernard on its way to Mars. Well, okay, most of this bit isn't. There's a payload bit that'll get to Mars. So here we go, and up, up and away. Looking pretty good, looking very nice indeed. And I think that it's well on its way. Yeah, there we go. Right, so it's gone. Are oh, we going to get into the nice bit there? And... Ah! Oh. <laughs> really? One more percent and it would have been in the positive event range. But never mind. Never mind. Okay, so the Agena booster gets a bit more reliable because we're obviously getting a bit more used to building it. Okay, so now we have to do this. We cannot auto sort of resolve these particular missions. When it's the sort of request missions, we can auto resolve those. But this one we cannot. So we need to enter Mars Transfer Orbit. Okay. Um, we need to get ourselves, what do we need? So some navigation and some of the thrust. But the thrust is going to decrease at the end of every turn. Okay, so the only thing that gets us thrust is a calculated thruster burn. And that needs two data. And so, yeah, two blue, as we saw last time, two uh, blue data and one red comms. Okay, so we need to use a bit of our power, I think. So let's do that and let's generate, um, let's use, yeah, let's use five. There we go. So use quite a lot of power, but we do have some backup power as well. So, yeah, hopefully not all of these will fail. I'm expecting some of these to go wrong. Okay, no. That's got us extra resources. Oh, that is brilliant. Okay. We have four comms. 
that's really handy. We can use that for many other things. This one, hopefully, will just creep over the line. Yep, it's blended. That's worked. So we've got some data coming in as well. And that one has pathetically failed. Okay, fine. Right, resist that because we need the stuff to go in. Okay, so now we've got some comms and some data to play with. So we can do a calculated thruster burn. So boom, there we go. So that gets us four thrust and we're up to four navigation. If we could get a bit more navigation, that would be very handy indeed. I mean, we could do that. We could go manual thrust adjustment, three comms, which we have, gives us four, four of the sort of purple nav stuff and a point of data as well. And then we'll just keep the power because we, as we've seen, we could use that all the time. Right, so that's worked out fine. Calculated thrust to burn. We've now got some thrust going on, which is lovely. Uh, and then that thing has also worked. Okay, except that. So we have the base requirements. We've actually succeeded in the mission, but if we can get ourselves a bit of a... Oh, no, we haven't, of course, because that comes back down. Of course it does. So now we need some more data and some more comms again. Okay, data and comms. We could, we could go for this. We could relinquish that. So micrometeorite detection would let us do a calculated thruster burn. With that plenty of thrust there, that gets us up to seven. Yeah, we could do with getting eight to get the bonus. But then, yeah, we're going to struggle to get, we're going to struggle to get that, aren't we? Okay, right, recharge that. Right, let's do this. Let's just get a bit of power back in. And that worked out fine. Accept. That is lovely. And then, oh, 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 no, not quite into the good range. But okay. So we're on eight nav. And now the thing has come out. So six thrust. So if we want to get, yeah, we're going to have to get another four of those. I don't think we can get the bonus objectives. Because we're going to need to do that. So we need the two, two data and the one sort of comms resource anyway. To get the four thrust. Uh, and that gives us one of those. And then we need three of the, three of the purples as well, which I don't think we can do. I just don't think that's a thing that's going to happen. I mean, that gets us up to 11. That would, yeah, it's not possible. It's fine. We'll just complete the task. It's okay. We've done, just check. Yeah, ticky ticks. We've done the base goal. Yeah, absolutely. Yay. Right. So phase one is done. Bit of support, bit of science. Always very good indeed. Um, and... Japan is launching crude moon landing in 22 months. No, how very dare you. We're still unlocking the secrets of how to build a large launch pad. I mean, can't we just look at the medium launch pad and just make it bigger? Can we not go, well, the large launch pad is, the, the medium launch pad is this big. The large launch pad could just be just bigger than the medium one. Oh no, okay, fine, right. So we're just going to sit and wait again. Both our mission slots are full. We can do nothing else. We've just got to sort of sit just going to have to sit here. And NASA has reached Era 3, Mars and beyond. Okay, what is that mission that America have just launched? What's that they're doing? They're going somewhere. They're, they're off into space. Where are you guys going? What is this? I don't know what they're doing. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, they've gone from there. Which one of these is that? Orbital EVA? No, they've done that. <laughs> We're the only one that's not bothered doing the Orbital EVA either. <laughs> We're so far behind in so many things. The next mission phase is ready. Okay, right. Mars orbit. Next bit. Um, yep, let's let's go. We could do with getting this done. Um, we're just in space. Just in space. Execute trajectory correction. Okay. Uh, right, there are many things on there. There is many things. I'll just muddle through. I will muddle through and get all this sort of sorted. Because, um, because yeah, there's only so many times you can watch this mini game. So I'll just muddle through. We'll get all this done. If we can get the bonus, that will be grand. But I don't see us getting the bonus. As long as we get the basics in, I'm happy. And there we go. That actually wasn't that bad. We didn't get the bonus because that was really hard to get. But we have done the mid-course manoeuvre, which gets us more support. And a bit more science as well. That's science is going to be really handy because it's pushing us toward that large launch pad goal, which is slowly getting closer. In fact, next month, is that going to be done? A new request mission is available on Earth. We can't do anything because we've got two missions. That is brilliant. Okay. Okay. Right. Do we need anything else? So first things first, base. Let's go to build and let's get ourselves where is the large launch pad. Allows the launch of heavy rockets. It's relatively expensive, but we do have quite a bit of money. Uh, okay, it's completely massive. It is absolutely huge, and I don't think we can put it next to anything that's going to get it a 
bonus. Yeah, we can't put it just there because there's a pond. Somebody, for some reason, has decided to put a water feature just here, which means that we don't get a bonus from that. What would we get? Minus 3% vehicle build time. That would be very good to have. Unfortunately, yeah, we're going to struggle with that. Uh, I mean, can we move things around? Do they move immediately? Do they move sort of by magic? Uh, yes, they do. Okay, right, hang on. So if we put that there, that's going to cost us a bit of money to actually get rid of that. We could drop that into there. That might free up a bit of space over here, possibly. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, this is interesting. Yes, yeah, so we can just move things around. Yeah, that's a bad place for that to be. So that fits there quite nicely. Okay, so back to the large launch pad. Can we put that there? Yeah, where, where, is there a place? Where does it get a, be a bonus from? It only gets a bonus from that thing. Hang on a minute, go to move. From this, the vehicle hanger is the only thing that that gets a bonus from. So, I mean, could we put the vehicle hanger just there? That is going to cost us a bit of money to move all that stuff out of the way. Um, hang on. It's all, it's free to move this round. Pop that there. So, oh no, that doesn't like being next to that. The rocket test pad doesn't want to go next to the scientists because it's going to disturb them or whatever. Okay, if we pop that there, grab that, rotate that back round. Nice bonuses. Yeah, so we don't get the negative from that. And now, build the large launch pad. It can sit there. And there we go. It's next to the little sort of hangar thing. So we get ourselves a 3% reduction in our vehicle build time, which is probably not brilliant, but it's better than nothing. So there we go. A large launch pad is underway. And do we need anything else? Do we need anything else to sort this out? Because, yeah, now Japan are going to get a second. I was so confident we'd get a second, but no. Okay, we're looking at third. We're looking at third place. Um, is there anything else we need? We've got all the vehicle parts and everything else. We need to save up some money to get some more astronauts. Okay, research-wise, what do we want to get? We've still got loads and loads of research remaining. Um, I mean, the visitor centre does sound like a good thing. Plus 10% total rewards from successful request missions. But then we could get this. That's 20% cost of research on the missions research tree. That's quite good. That makes vehicle research cheaper. That unlock better astronauts or do we want to get some more missions unlocked do we want to go and get some more missions unlocked i mean we've not even got this done. we've not got satellite imaging mission done yet i mean that's probably a really good thing to do but we've not even got that venus impactor we've not got that either the science reward of that is quite high 2550 over nine months that's quite good venus orbit is 3100 is there something that nobody's done is there something that nobody has bothered to do? Right, Mercury Orbit. They've all done Mercury Orbit, except us. Okay, right. I suspect this is going to make me sad. And most people have done the Venus Impactor and Venus Orbit. Okay, so us and the Americans haven't bothered. Okie dokie. <laughs> right. Um, satellite Imaging, we haven't done. Multicrew Orbit, we haven't done. Orbital EVA, we haven't done. How are they so far ahead? I, do, I don't understand. Commercial Satellite, only Japan have done that. Okay, uh, moon, 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 uh, lunar orbit, we were last, crew moon landing, we're probably now going to be third, which is all very unfortunate, and then Mars, Mars orbit is underway, and then we can't do anything else. Um, I mean, do we care about going to Venus and Mercury? Do we need to worry about that? I don't think we really do. Let's get ourselves, let's get another building unlocked. So let's try and move down space plane runway, centrifuge training, one extra mission. That might be handy. That might be very handy indeed. Hang on, let's get this. Mission control expansion. That's one additional mission slot. Is this what everybody's been doing? Have they got massive mission controls and we have not? Okay, <laughs> that's possibly it. Okay, so the launch pad is on its way. I think we got, did we get a tiny bit of support? Yeah, nothing that's going to make any difference. Okay, don't cry. So next month, the final bit of Mars orbit is ready. Okay, let's do this. Let's get Mars orbit sorted. Let's finish this. Let's get it nicely successfully orbiting and all that kind of stuff. It looks very dramatic. Wee! Off it goes into space. There's Mars. And right, we need to do this. We don't want this to explode because this would be bad. So we've got eight power. What do we need? Four comms, four data and four navigation. That's nice and easy. Four of everything. Okay, let's just do that to start with. Just do one of each of the top things to get some basic data and resources and stuff in. That has worked very nicely. Okay, so we'll accept that. One of these is going to fail at some point, isn't it? 
that's not failed. Okay, so that gets us the data. And that one has failed, so we'll spend a go and we'll spend a power on resisting that. And boom. Okay, so we've got three turns remaining, and we just need to get one of each data type. That should not be too tricky. However, could we do gyroscopic stabilization, spend two of our data, but then top those up very nicely indeed? That's pretty good. And then, or, oh, hang on, no, undo that. Undo that. Could we then go, okay, two power and one data to get six of those? That would push us over the limit into the into bonus territory, which would be very nice indeed. And then we could spend three of those to get four of that and two of that. So yeah, four red and two blue, which then would mean that we've completed the mission and then we'll recharge a bit of power. Okay, okay, that looks pretty good. So we've got enough power to sort of deal with things if it all goes wrong. That's gone into good territory, I think. So we've got an extra bit of data. Always very nice indeed. And that also was successful. Okay, we've got the base things in. We've got two turns to get the bonus sort of uh, reward. We've got to be able to do this. We've got to be able to do this. So we need, what do we need? We need one comms. I mean, that, that gives us a lot of comms. That gives us a heck of a lot of comms. If we do that and then spend the comms, if we go like that, to so say, okay, spend one blue and one purple to get 12 comms, and then spend three of those comms on getting three data. So three blue and two purple. There we go. That pushes us a bit closer and then we'll recharge the power. Okay, so power goes in three. Wonderful. That's now worked very nicely. Okie doke. And then, ah, that's why we saved the power. That's all going a bit wibbly. Okay, so now all we need to get the bonus, we need one data and one navigation. Is there anything that just gives us one data and one navigation? There is, there is not. That gives us three. So we could go, yep, yeah, okay, boom. Three nav. Then we need one data. We could do that and then recharge our power. So if we do this, we're going to have all the stuff for the bonus reward, but we do need... If one, if both those fail, we're in trouble. If one of them fails, we've got the power to back it up. So, okay, here we go. Are we going to get the bonus? So in it goes, and it's fine. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Except that if the next one fails, we've got the power to sort of resist it and sort it all out. That is brilliant. But no, we didn't even need it. We've got spare power on that thing. Accept that, and we get a 50% bonus reward. Hey, right, everybody, look, we're a bit behind, but look, we've we've gone into orbit around Mars. There we go. So we finished a, a glorious last, but it's fine. Fifth is better than, you know, uh, actually, no, it's not better than anyone else because that's the last agency, but it's fine. We've got lots of support and a lot of science coming in now, which is wonderful for 10 months. Well, that's very good. Okay, right. That is excellent news. Now we find ourselves... At a bit of a loss because we have another mission we can do a joint mission with our japanese counterparts yeah absolutely let's go and do that uh so yeah modifiers we have one called for the world which is good so and then buildings gives us a nice boost as well to our reputation okay yeah let's get that done and that's publicized so if it fails it goes very badly indeed but if it succeeds then hooray everyone's very happy yeah, let's do a heat shield analysis. That sounds thoroughly lovely. Okay, um, and we'll spend a bit more and get this one here that's got some good power just so it works. If you don't want to take a great big kind of you know, sort of support hit and what have you. Um, okay, right. Well, let's get that done. Let's wait till the large launch pad is ready and then we can go and finally maybe go to the moon and finish in third place rather than second. You know, a distant third, but still we need to get there first. We need to make sure it all works. But, you know, we can try. We can just give it a nice go. OK, Mars has been engulfed in a planet wide dust storm, which our satellite has picked up. I mean, you know, it's a good job we got the satellite there just in time for this. The storm has prevented certain scientific experiments from being conducted, but has also provided some extraordinary images. A popular magazine has admitted it was too hasty in its previous dismissal of the barren world, dedicating a four page spread to the spectacular sights of the red planet. So we got 600 support out of this, but our mission science has come down a tiny little bit because, yes, it's a bit dusty down there and we can't see what we're doing. OK, that's fine. And we've got mission control research done or the expansion, which is good. And now go down there 
that's going to be another 4,000 to research that. Now, the only thing is, how expensive is that going to be? Right, we need to, I think we need to leave this for a bit. So there we go. Get this done. So this comes in. Yep, lovely. Bill, oh, bill cost, a bit cheaper. Oh, for level naught vehicle parts. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to use proper things. Right, so heat shield analysis, reuse um can we reuse we'll go for a betty we'll reuse a betty please yeah let's load that design thank you very much did i not say oh, i didn't save the queen liz design oh we'll have to go and redo that at some other point um yeah okay and that's a little bit cheaper thanks to our japanese counterparts right okay get one of those sorted please and then i mean yeah we just need to sort of push it on i mean the large launch pad is going to be complete relatively soon so Japan is launching in six months. This is just outrageous. Okay, right. We've got that research done. So we can now have two extra missions. We could have four missions going at once. <laughs> We'd never have any money. <laughs> We'd just be broke all of the time. Um, I mean, we've got nine out of 13. Are they worth researching now? If we get all of those done, those four, we get ourselves an extra 5% launch reliability forevermore. We could complete all that research in... Not very long at all. That would be four months worth of research, pretty much. And that would give us a 5% launch reliability forever. Uh, is that worth doing? It's probably quite good. But then, yeah, we could also do with getting down into era three. Because we know, we know that NASA are down into this era here. So is it worth just getting ourselves another rocket? Let's get this. Supplementary SRBs. They're cheaper to research. There, there we go. We'll get them done and that'll push us down to this next era just here. Let's grab that. There we go. Lovely, lovely. That will take, what, a couple of months possibly? So, right. The large launch pad is complete. And that research is complete. Yay. Okay. Okay. First things first. Crude moon landing. Okay. We need to pick astronauts. Okay. We only have the one at the moment. So, right. Let's get you. Right. Assign Betty. Betty Door, you're absolutely in. Now we need three more. Oh, this is, this is brilliant. Okay. Um, problem solver one. Minus one random resource requirement per task. You're going to, ah, 12k salary. Uh, okay. Thomas, you're in. Absolutely. In you come. Um, you, uh, yeah, you can go in a second. Uh, right. Indra Segrito, start each task with plus one navigation. Um, Yep, you're expensive to hire, but we'll hire you. And then we've got three athletes and one person that's just going to have an increased retirement age. I'm not really bothered about your retirement age. You're going to retire in September 2010. Good grief. <laughs> okay, that's quite some way off. You're going to retire in... When do you retire? At the age of 69. You're going to retire at 45, but you do recover quicker. Um, Why don't we just get you? You're cheaper in terms of salary as well. You are... No, oh, these are all trainees as well. We're sending trainees to the moon. <laughs> Is, the, is that the best policy? I do not know. Let's get you. Perdita Fuentes. You will get you in, I think. We'll get you because you've got an amazing name. And yeah, you're relatively cheap. You're going to retire in quite a long time. So yeah, okay, we'll hire you. Absolutely. And then we'll just have you and you and also you just there. Right. So we've got our four people in, which is brilliant. Training. Okay. Science. That will be wonderful. Uh, we get a load of science out of that. Public support would help with the monies, but I prefer the science. We need to catch up with everybody. Um, launch reliability is 85%, so that's all okay. So, three and a half thousand science we get out of this. Okay, and set a launch date. I think April. April will get us pretty much, I think. Yeah, Japan are going to... Japan have got that sorted. They're going to land in three months. So, yeah, okay, we'll pick April confirm the mission okay okay this is very exciting right we need to pick a thing to research uh, we have unlocked era three so what does that give us that gives us, we get all of these we get a special booster um do we want to just grab any of those boosters now they are quite a lot of research or do we go down some more missions we need to get the commercial satellite mission done no we don't know we can go straight down here okay this is interesting mission space station do we want to go and get ourselves a space station? That might be fun. Yeah, let's go for a space station. Because we could go down that road, I think. Maybe we could do that and try and at least become first in <laughs> come first in something. There must be something we can do. Okay, the Betty is complete. Hello, Betty. Yep, grab some stuff. Um, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right, that there. 
Now we can assign... Oh, no. The hot, the heat shield analysis needs another crew member. Um, we need to hire another person. Okay, who would like to come in? Gutierro. We'll hire you as well. We just need all the astronauts. Um, yeah, okay. And then we will pick you. So, assign you to that particular mission. Confirm that. And what do we want to do? Base for launch, uh, launch reliability is assigning out Betty Dorr will increase vehicle mission training bonus. I know, but she's on another mission. Go away there, Selino. Go away. Um, how about we have... Ooh, what do we go for? Do we? The other one's going for science. Why don't we get some support? Might give us an extra bit of money. There we go. Yes, yeah, so we'll pick that. And then a launch date of July. Yeah, splendid. Okay, so confirm those two big missions. So one is going in... Yeah, the crew moon landing is in four months. Okay, right. Pay review. A face on Mars? A recent image taken during a Mars orbit mission has captured the public's imagination due to its uncanny resemblance to a human face. The scientists have explained that it's simply an optical illusion due to shadows falling on a Martian hill. Yet more eccentric sections of the media have claimed it to be clear evidence of an ancient civilization. Your researchers are keen to dismiss such stories. Yet your PR team have noted the potential for increasing support for space exploration. I think we discourage this and go down the scientific angle. Let's sort of go, no, no, no. You know, we've, we've got plenty of support coming in, but science is going to really help. So we'll dismiss the speculation. Unfortunately, this isn't evidence of an advanced Martian civilization, a spokesperson said, yet there's still endless mysteries to uncover on the red planet. Well done. Very well spun. That's quite good. And hopefully the budget review, do we go up? Yes. 8,098, we get a little bit more money per month, which is wonderful because we need to pay for all our astronauts that we've just hired. So, okay. This is wonderful. Okay, right. So Japan have launched. Looks like Japan are going to get second to the moon. Yes, they've completed the moon landing. Okay, Japan. Well done. I mean, at least we're going to be third. <laughs> at least we're going to be third with that one. Okay, this is big. This is big, though. You know, I mean, okay, we're way behind everyone else. But if this works, this is going to get us a massive load of stuff. Support and science and everything. Okay, there it is. Adequate conditions are oh, brilliant. I'm so glad it's entirely adequate. So, a 4% chance that this, our, our European mission to put people on the moon could explode. 12% chance it's just a bit bad. 63% chance it's good. And a 21% chance it's wonderful. Yep, absolutely fine. Here we go. The world will be watching. I mean, not as many people probably will watch this one as they would have watched the Russian one. That, well, sorry, the Soviet one that got there first. But this is still hugely important. There it is. It is a mahoosive rocket. Up, up and away it goes. Do not explode, rocket. It's not looking good, is it? It's not looking good. That is worryingly slow. Do not explode. Do not explode. Do not explode. <laughs> is it looking good? Oh my goodness. I honestly thought it was going really slow. I thought it was going to blow up. So how's it looking? It's... Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on now, you could have gone a little bit more. Ah, oh, the random number generator gods are not with us. Okay, fine. Secure launch. They get a little bit more reliable, which is absolutely wonderful. And then we have to do this, of course. We can't just sort of auto do these. So here we go. Crude moon landing. I don't know how many phases this is in. Right, performing a translunar injection. Now these get really complicated now because we've got crew as well. We've got crew that can do some stuff. There are four crew members that can help us out a little bit. Um, how about, how about we just do two manual data collections and then we'll just store up a bit of power for our first, oh no, I think we might have to get the thrust in actually, mightn't we? Don't do the power. So, okay, clear the power, get the controlled burn sorted. Yeah, let's do that for our first set of commands. So, two astronauts look out the window. For so somehow they fail to look out of a window. I mean, okay, it's a space window. It's fine. Right, yes, we'll resist that. Then fine. We'll do the power thing. And then another look out of the window, which works. So that's good. So now we've got a nice pile of pile of the comm stuff. And then, yep, control burn. Brilliant. Okay, so that's sorted. So we've got ourselves the comm stuff done. But we need to do another thrust. We need to do some more of this because, yes, it's obviously going to keep slowing down. So we need two of the astronauts to look out the window again, then do another controlled burn again. That gets us up there. And then we need another couple of purples as well. Are we able to, are we able to 
get another two of those. We could do cosmic dust analysis. Who doesn't love some cosmic dust? Um, to get three data and two purple. So we'll do that. Confirm that. Okay, all of these, if you could work, please. There you go. They've looked out the window. That's a load of comms. They have done a control burn. That gives us thrust and a purple one. And then cosmic dust analysis. Yep, it's dust in space. Okay, so that's looking very nice. We've not got anything for the bonus yet, but it'd be great. Oh, it's only a 10% bonus. Only a 10%, not even a 50% bonus award. Oh, is it, even, is it even worth putting all the effort in? I do not know. Um, Okay, well, let's do you looking out the window for 11, and then you look out the window again, and then do a control burn. Yeah, it's really hard to get the other resources in because you have to keep doing the burn because that's going to keep coming down. Do you know what? We'll, we'll do that. Come on, let's just make this work. Yeah, that was fine. Splendid. And again, oh, that worked even better. We got ourselves one of the purple sort of things out. And, okay, control burn. At the moment, yeah, because we keep losing that. So we're going to need to do another controlled burn. This is the last turn. We've got all the good results in, so it's all fine. So do another controlled burn. That gets us to 13 out of 10. We've got enough. We need nine comms. And we've got 11. And we've got eight nav and we need... We need two more navigation. Uh, I mean, we can just do that, can't we? Could we do that? And that gets us 11, 10, 13, 9, 10, 10. So yeah, we could get the bonus thing. And then we just recharge our power. Just have a little bit more power up there. Okay. This could work very nicely indeed. Okay, so that ticks in quite nicely. Then the payload alignment goes in. And I think that's done. I think we just got ourselves a 10% bonus reward out of that. That's pretty good. Okay, right, so job number one done. We slowly drifting to the moon. Okay, right. They will get there at some point. I don't know when. Oh, they're here already. Okay, that was quicker than I thought. Okay, now we need to achieve lunar orbits. We need to do all this kind of stuff again. So what do we need now, though? We can use our person resources to just get loads of the comm stuff. Let's just do that twice. So there we go. We get eight comms. We get the sufficient amount of comms out of it right there, which is brilliant. The only thing is, yeah, oh, then we can do an external sensor alignment. Okay, right. Do that. So that's a load of comms coming in. Beautiful. That is some more comms coming in. Beautiful. And then, oh, yes. What does that get us? Five data and two navigation resources. Okay, now can we use some of our data to actually get the rest of the navigation resources in. Oh, hang on, this is good. That generates all sorts of goodies. Flight path control. Can we just do that three times? That's quite good. Yeah, okay, let's do that three times. Flight path control. Let's make sure the flight path is nice and controlled. Yes, please. So that gets us some resources. That one didn't work at all well, but we've got power, we've got backup, it's fine. And that worked very nicely indeed. Okay, so we've got two turns left. We need to get ourselves a massive stack of comms and a big load of the navigation as well. I don't know if we can get... Oh, yeah, there, look. Orbital plane adjustment to power. That will get us six navigation. So that will put us into bonus territory for that. That means the data is enough. And then we just need to get ourselves... What's that? Another five... Could we do that and that hang on we need to recharge our power i think first right recharge power we've got we've got a couple of turns left so this comes out that's just succeeded okay but that's brilliant please succeed yes okay manual data collection is done four comms coming our way so we've got enough enough uh, data we've now got enough nav we just need one more comms which we can do by people just looking out of the window and then we just recharge two lots of power so yeah, okay, absolutely. We will do that, please. And it didn't work, but we've got ourselves some spare power that we kept behind. So there we go. That next bit is done. Oh no, and the next bit's got another... There they are, though. There they are. This is very exciting. Okay, this is the last bit. Don't mess this bit up. But we need... Oh, there's so many resources we need. Four turns. Okay, okay, what do we need then? So... It makes sense when you start. Um, what's that do? That needs a... Uh, what what's that pointy looking thing? What is that? Don't know what the pointy looking thing is. 
If we do that twice, that gets us lots of comms. And then can we just, can we just then recharge our, oh no, we don't need to recharge the power just yet. We've got lots of power right now. And that, that is not, hang on. And then can we do, can we do a manual flight path control? Why can't we do that? Oh, because we've got no people left. We've got no people resources. Okay, I mean, we need quite a bit of data. Is there anything we can do to just generate some data? Uh, we could do that. Infrared mapping. Let's do that. That gets the massive stack of data. Okay, right. Let's see if this all works. So, beautiful. Okay, manual data collection complete. Excellent stuff. That just creeps over. Lovely, lovely. And then infrared mapping also worked. Okay, so things looking very nice indeed. Oh, that's what we've got to do. Oh, hang on a minute. I hadn't taken this into account. This becomes infinitely more complicated. I kind of just disregarded this thing. Okay, drift is a threat. Great precision is required for complex maneuvers such as docking. Keep drift within the required parameters to complete the task. Falling out of the parameters will only fail the mission when no turns remain. Keep drift between minus one and one. So currently our drift is minus four. Ah, okay, right. We need to generate some drift. We need to do an external sensor alignment, I think is what we need to do. And that would generate three. That'll get us back. Yes. Oh, I did not even see that over there. I just, I was looking up here thinking, where's that resource? Okay. Yeah, they were used there while they were looking out the window. They were drifting around. Ah, okay. Okay. This is all fine. So we need to get ourselves. So we can do that uplink for a bit of power. And then we need two. Uh, can we do, can we do that actually? Location extrapolation. Okay. Let's go for this. That should get us the base, the base things in, the base requirements. So that worked, which is beautiful. Okay, so we get a big load of stuff. Drift goes over there. Right, we're back on drift. It's all good. It's all looking good. Okay, we get ourselves some uh, some comms, and then we get ourselves location extrapolation. That is all wonderful. Okay, we're all good. We're all good. I think we're going to really struggle to get the rest of those resources in. We're going to really struggle. I mean, yeah, we need the six comms. If we do, I think we just complete it. I, I'm a bit worried about the drift thing. The drift thing concerns me and we can just complete this right now. We could just go, yay, we're done. Because that's really hard to get hold of. That's going to be really tricky to do. So maybe, do we try and have a go? Um. Okay, okay, right, hang on. Visual spectrum sampling, one power gives us some data. And then we could go gyroscopic stabilization to give us some nav and some comms. Okay, so that gives us 12, 10 and eight. And then we could regenerate a power. Let's do that. That has nothing to do with our drift at all. I don't believe. I don't think we've done anything with the drift. That is unfortunate, but okay, we'll resist that. Thank you. That worked quite nicely. Okay, drift is looking good. So now we've got one last turn to get three comms and one navigation. Okay, that would get us three comms. But unfortunately, yes, we then can't do anything else. We have no power. So we could go like that and then go like that and then go location extrapolation. But of course, yes, if either of those fail, we're not going to get the bonus. Although we're still absolutely miles clear on our basic requirements and we're OK with the drift. Yeah. OK. OK. Let's have a go. I mean, yeah, it might not work. It might fall apart horribly. And it has fallen apart horribly. <laughs> OK. Joe, well, never mind. It, it will resist that, but we can't do the next action. But it's all fine. Yeah, we can't do it. But we're still OK. We still succeeded. We just didn't get the bonus. There it is. Okay, pop off the little landy bit and down you go. Don't crash. We sorted the drift out when I realised what it was. Down it goes. Come on, you can do this. Where have they gone? Moon? Oh, yes. Down it comes. This is historic. This is a huge... Mo oh, the, the earth is in the background and they are not going to explode. Down they come. Gentle landing, folks. Gentle landing. And boom. Beautiful. Ah, oh, we've, we've landed on the moon. <laughs> right. Joe, you know what? We're th there we go. 
the first Europeans to have a wander about on the moon. Oh, it's it's beautiful. It's a wonderful, wonderful moment. Hooray! <laughs> oh, I'm really happy. That is very good. I'm glad we got that done. Okay. Yeah, we've done all the stuff. We didn't get the bonus on the last one, but do you know what? I don't think we can be too picky. And there it is. We have landed upon the moon and now we just sort of fire off back up and we clear off back home again. Is there another mission thing to do? Crikey's. Okay, right. We need to dock with the command module. I'll just fly through this because, yeah, these things will get a little bit sort of samey, don't they? So, right. We'll just, I'll just sort of run through this nice and quick. And it's a mission success. We didn't get the bonus. The bonus was actually quite hard to get. It needed an awful lot of the nav resources and a lot of the stuff was linked to the, the sort of drift thing. So, but that's fine. There we go. We've docked with the command module. We've got another task now. Oh my goodness me. Who thought that going to space would be so complicated? Right, so it looks like, yeah, we've got like a burn thing now. So that's another risk, is it? That's another thing that we've got to be aware of. So we're coming back in our little kind of pod thing. So, okay, so what is this then? So yeah, we now have heat. So we need to make sure that we don't get too hot. Keep heat below four. Okay, okay, I see. Right, so if we do manual data collection, that spends some heat. So now that is heat with modifier between one and five. Keep heat below four. Yeah, so that's a tick. That's a tick right now. That's absolutely fine. But that's going to start ticking up, of course, because yes, they're plummeting toward the earth. Okay, um, right. Let's go through and get this one done as well then, because yes, again, it's just lots of clicking things to make numbers balance. So yeah, we'll make it work. It's fine. Okay, I think we've done it. I think we're okay. We're not going to get the bonus. That seems quite hard to do. And this heat thing is a little bit random. I think the heat generator thing is a, is a random thing that we can't control. So yeah, thing appears here. The task will end if heat reaches four, but I think we get one between one and five. Yeah. So we're below four. So I think we could just complete the task. I don't think we need to get another six of those. So another six purple and another six of those. Yeah, that's that's really hard to do, given that we've got this dangerous thing going on. I think we just sort of we just accept that this is done just to check tick and tick. Yeah, it's all sorted. Let's get our people back home. Let's get them home in their lovely little capsule thing. We down you go. Big historic moment. We've actually done it. We've done all of the tasks down. They drop into the sea and oh, we'll watch this because it's dramatic and sploosh. The people in that capsule have been to the moon, everybody. They've been to the moon. Can we get to them really quick? Because it would be a terrible thing if they just sort of sank a bit. Yep. And the boats are there. Oh my goodness me. Right. We should see an awful lot of wonderful things. Right. We were third. That's okay. We'll take that. So uh, what do we get then? So we get, oh, this is this is going to be glorious. Oh, yes, we get almost 2,000 support and 872 science for six months. Oh, my word, that is completely amazing. All of our crew are now completely exhausted. And oh, my goodness me, that took a heck of a long time to get sorted. But there we go. We are third, third to get, oh, no, hang on, there, third to get to the moon. And America and Russia haven't even bothered They've not even bothered to go to the moon. They've not even thought about it. They've you know, got priorities elsewhere. But yeah, look at that. Look at that. That is going to be glorious. So that's looking very good. And our science now. Our science. I mean, we're going to research the space station in no time at all. Where is that? Can we look at where that's going to be? It's going to be down here. Space station. So America have got this unlocked. They've got this unlocked, but they've not done anything with it yet. Maybe that's where we should sort of focus. That's where we should start focusing. Get you know, stuff like that done. Go for special things. Let's not go and do what everyone else has done. We'll go and do our own thing. Okay, this is interesting. There is a joint mission on Mars with the Japanese. Like, well, okay, it's not on Mars exactly. It's you know, up in the skies above Mars. Um, so yeah, it is a diplomatic mission with Japan. They want to go and look at the Martian polar ice caps. So if we do that, we get quite a lot of support, which is nice. We get a good bit of science. We also get some more reputation with Japan, which could be quite useful because, yes, we want to become good friends with everybody. And then we get advanced weather proofing. OK, I mean, we have seen that possibly the rain is not brilliant. So, yeah, we can just, I don't know, put some some sort of I don't know, oil on the rocket or something to make it a bit slippy. So the rain just runs straight off. I mean, it might be worth doing that. We're not going to be doing any of the other milestones anytime soon. Second in that one. And we've done that one. Mars lander, we're nowhere near getting done. So let's not worry about that. Moon, um, yeah, we've done both of those. So we were last and third. 
Request, there's one for meteorites, but it doesn't give you that much money. Earthwise, yeah, there's the heat shield analysis that we're doing now with Japan. Um, another, another one with Japan. And then, yeah, multi-crew orbit and that thing, the orbital EVA, we've not even bothered. But everyone else seems to have muddled through and got it sorted. So, um, yeah, maybe we just focus on, focus on these things, space stations. Maybe we could just get space stations sorted. That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Just get that in. Um, yeah, okay, let's do that then. Okay, so let's go over to Mars and this gives us some nice stuff. So we're not doing anything else right now with our sort of resources. So, all right, polar analysis. Yes, please. Get one which is good at power. It is quite expensive to build, but yep, yeah, okay, right, get that done. Build that, please. And um, yeah, okay, right, let's just crack on. And our heat shield analysis mission is ready to launch. So let's see how this goes. 85%. Bad conditions bring it down to 77%. There is a 6% chance of it exploding. I mean, right now we could do with that sort of, you know, waterproof thing to put on the rocket. Um, do we reschedule it or just go for it? We'll just go for it. We'll just, we'll just, sort of, we'll be fine. We'll all be fine. It'll all be glorious. Okay, so here we go. It's going to take off. This is going to go over to, uh, what was this one again? A heat shield analysis. This was just going up into around Earth, I think it was, wasn't it? I don't think this is going to Mars or anything. But here we go. So this thing goes up, up and away. And again, it's looking pretty stable. If a little bit of a wonky angle, but I'll blame it on the camera. Okay, good, good, good. Do we get anything exciting from in here? And nope, 61%. Okay, that's good. Those things can't level up anymore. And there is a 3% chance that this mission fails. I think I think we can auto-resolve that with confidence. There we go. It has succeeded. They've tested the heat shield. The person comes down. Yep, we've seen that bit before. And there we go. So we get ourselves our goodies out of it. We get 606 uh, popularity or whatever it is, uh, support. We get a bit of science. And also, yes, we become even better buddies with Japan. And our astronaut has to go and have a little lie down, which is fine. Okay. How are we doing with Japan? We're almost one more mission with Japan. That mission we're doing will push us into friendly territory with Japan, which means we get a boost to our science. Moon photo dominates papers. A photograph of astronaut Perdita Fuentes. I knew it was going to be her. She was destined to be a star because she's got a brilliant name. Standing beside your agency's flag on the moon has seen widespread media coverage with many newspapers already describing the image as iconic. And we got 400 support from that. That is brilliant. And we've completed our research on an orbital space station. This is brilliant. We have reached era three, everybody. We've unlocked the outer planets. The race to Mars begins. Landing humans on Mars is the ultimate milestone for our agency and achieving it first must be our primary long-term goal. Getting there will be our greatest technological challenge and we'll need to gain plenty of mission experience over the following decades before we're ready. But with your leadership, we can make humanitary, uh, humanitary, humanity, a multi-planetary species. The race to Mars screen is now unlocked. Where's the race to Mars screen? <gasps> There's a whole new screen. Oh, okay. This is very exciting. Okay. So we need some research. Yep. And we need to have done some missions. Okay. At the moment, our chance of mission success is abysmal. And yeah, we're on 0%. There are, nobody else is really doing much with this. Our rivals, what, 4% and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Look, there's a new bar and everything. Okay. This is very exciting. Uh, right. So... We want to get the space station done first because all the Mars stuff is quite some way down here. In fact, look how much research there still is. To, oh my goodness. Right, Skylab. Get that done, please. Go and research that. That would be great. And we've got to build our rocket for a polar analysis mission with our Japanese friends. Um, uh, yeah, we'll have a Bernard. We'll pick a Bernard, please. Um, for some reason, we can't pick a Bernard. Oh no, load design. Yeah, that one. Um, right, and yeah, that'll do. We'll call it the Bernard. The contractors are those guys. So they're going to do what? They're going to make it longer to build, but make it more reliable. Um, I'd rather, can we just build it? Can we just do that? We'll just select that. We'll, we'll go and build it. It's fine. It's okay. Um, and yeah, get that done, please. Thank you. We've got the money for it. Okay, how's our budget review looking? Okay, yeah, we've made great strides toward level nine. We're not quite there yet, but we're not far off. We are not far off the next level of funding. That's going to be very nice indeed. I mean, we're making an okay amount of money, but we're spending it on quite a lot of stuff. We've got to sort of maintain our buildings. And then now also we have to pay quite a few astronauts as well, who are currently not doing anything. They're just sort of sitting about. We don't have them when we need them. They're sort of on retainer or whatever. But okay, that's good. I mean, yeah, if we get up to the next level, that would give us a little bit more money to play with and we can expand our base a bit more. That would be quite nice. 
Ah, yeah, look here. So this thing here, this orbital radio mission, gives us 1% Mars experience. It's probably worth doing as well. I bet it's dead easy. And we've got a mission slot just sitting there doing nothing. So, yeah, okay, let's get this done as well. And um, we'll have the one with extra power. Our payload reliability is catastrophically rubbish. Ah, yes, it's because it's an experimental payload. Okay, fine, we'll go for that. Hopefully it won't sort of explode when it gets up there or whatever. Okay, so the Bernard is ready to launch to Mars to go and have a look at the poles. Uh, okay, right, so what do we want? Uh, launch reliability, 81%, that's okay. Bit of science, bit of support. Let's go for a bit of science. Science is key. Science gets everything done significantly quicker. So yeah, we'll go for that. And then a launch date will go for September. Let's pick September, please. There we go. Right, so confirm that mission. Thank you very much. And how's the other mission going? So the orbital radio. Ah, also needs a thing. Building, right, reuse. Um, yeah. Does anything give us an increase to our payload reliability? That's a bit... The burn is a little bit overkill. I think maybe... Do we go for a... Do we go for a Clive? Clive's pretty good. 77%... Oh, no, no, but a Jenny from Accounts. Jenny from Accounts is 526. A Clive is 208. Yeah, we'll go... We'll load up a Clive. Yeah, we'll get a Clive on this one, please. Absolutely. Let's get a Clive onto that. So, yeah, in six months' time, they will be ready. Okay, the polar analysis. So, the thing we're doing, we're sending over to Mars with our buddies over in Japan. That is ready for launch. So, what we'll do is we will finish up for now... And we'll come back next time and see how we get on with that. Because that could be quite good. I like the idea of going to do that. And I think maybe for future uh, Mars Horizon videos, we might need to sort of hurry things along a bit. Because I was just sort of looking through the amount of things there are to research and what have you. There is so much stuff. There is so much stuff. So it might be the case that we just come and look at the important missions. Yeah, the exciting ones where we build ourselves a space station or we land on Mars and all that kind of stuff. Because I just think that... Yeah, if we go through everything, we're going to be here forever. <laughs> we're going to be here for weeks and weeks and weeks looking at all this stuff. So, yeah, I think maybe we need to sort of hurry it along a little tiny bit. Maybe we will just focus on the exciting sort of fancy missions, like the Mars lander. That's going to be really good if we can get that done. That's going to be very exciting. So, uh, so yeah, we'll kind of we'll think about what we sort of you know, how we handle it and all that kind of stuff next time. But yeah, things are looking pretty good. We've got the new Mars thing on. So yeah, now the sort of the race to Mars is now an actual thing. The race to Mars is no longer a pipe dream. It's an actual real thing that we can now measure with proper numbers and everything. Although, to be fair, the Soviets do seem to be quite far ahead all of a sudden. We've got nothing. They've got 8%. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. We'll work on that next time. We'll work on it absolutely. But uh, but yeah, we'll finish up for now. Come back next time. See how we get on. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be very splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Mars Horizon. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Right, if we connect to there and open the door, we're going to get vaporized by this laser. And there's an electronic thing, which looks like a sad kind of Game Boy. <laughs> I'm a tiny little sort of uh, sort of stick person in a, in a computer. I can't steer the train as such. And look, we are outside and we're in a gutter. Oh, happy days. Hello, Leaf.